A couple years ago here in my channel, I introduced you guys to The Punisher, one of the greatest alternate picking exercises in the known universe. <laughs> That's still one of my favorite exercises, but what if you're a downwards pick slanting player like myself, or you want to learn the style that way you can master the licks of guys like Eric Johnson or Ying Yang Milkshake? If that sounds like you, this is what you need to be practicing. kids, it's your good buddy, Uncle Ben. Downwards pick slanting is a picking style with incredible potential. You've heard players like Joe Bonamassa, Eric Johnson, and Ingve Malmsteen use this style for years, but there's not exactly a lot of exercises out there devoted to mastering it. That's why I designed this exercise based on my popular Punisher workout. If you're already a downward pick slanting player, this can be a really great warm up for you. And if you're new to the style, this can get your alternate picking hotter than two rats fucking in a wool sock. Now that's hot. In this video, I'll show you guys the exercise, why you should be practicing it, and I'll also give you guys some essential downward pick slanting tips on your way out the door. As always, this video is brought to you guys by everybody who supports my channel over on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Sign up today, even for just a buck a month, you're going to get access to tons of bonus goodies and additional videos. This week, everybody who supports my channel is going to get tabs to go along with this lesson, as well as the practice tracks that I made to work this thing up to speed, plus guitar profiles, that way you can create your own perfect practice session. So don't delay, sign up today. Gear-wise for today's video, I'm playing my beloved Sir Modern Satin right here. I've got that running into a Boss SD-1 into the front of my Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier going into the Universal Audio Aux. That blast of alternate pick goodness was brought to you by all the things that you'll be able to perform if you master downward pick slanting, and this exercise is going to help you get there. Okay, let's check it out. It's based on the typical popular chromatic one, two, three, four kind of format, but with some special exceptions made to help us get this technique down. Let's check it out. It's all going to be alternate pick, start with a downstroke, follow through with an upstroke, lather, rinse, repeat. Okay, check this out. What we're going to do is to think about this in pairs of strings. So first we're going to think about the E string and the A string. Play four notes on the low E. And then we're going to split this in half. Two notes on the A. Two notes on the E. So you have one, two, three, four. One, two, one, two. Okay? Next, think about the same thing, but starting from the A string. So four on the A. Then split it two and two. Then we start on the D. Two and two. Just the G, two and two, just the B, two and two, and then here at the very last part, what I want you to do is to play four notes on the high E string, and then off the last note, just edge up one note. This is all going to be a theme that you'll see throughout this entire thing. Whatever the last note on the last string is, edge up and move one fret. Your mom has taught a lot of us about edging and this is a great way to get your toes in the water. So after you edged your way up, we're gonna be here in the second position. This is where we start the descending version of the exercise. Play down four notes on the high E. Then we're gonna split this two and two. Two notes on the B, then back to two notes on the high E. Okay? That's your basic unit for the descending portion. Then start from the B. Two and two, G, two and two, D, two and two, A, two and two, low E, with the last note edging up, just like we talked about. Really making your mom proud of that one. So if I play through the ascending then descending version, it's gonna sound like this. Rest. Rest. 
and so on and so on. You get the idea. The practice tracks that I'm uploading to my Patreon page have you playing that all the way up an entire octave. So you start off on the low F and you'll finish here on the high F on the 13th fret of the low E. Those rest breaks that we take in between the ascending and descending portions of the lick are really important. This is your time to kind of reflect on the things that you've been doing. Notice if you've been retaining any tension in your playing. Like if you hit that rest note and you notice that your shoulders drop, or that you suddenly exhale or whatever, it means you've been hanging on to some tension. You want to try to eliminate that. So try to make sure whenever you do those little rest breaks that you're already relaxed before you get there. So what makes this a good alternative to practicing the regular Punisher exercise? Which sounds like this. Well, the Punisher is designed to kind of be a total package picking workout because it works out all the different combinations of string changing possibilities with the pick. You have outside changes off of a downstroke. You have outside changes off of an upstroke. You also have the inverse of that. You have inside changes off of a down and outside changes off of an up. It kind of does a little bit of everything, which is what makes it so powerful. But if you're a true downwards pick slanting player, like Marty Friedman, or like um, Nuno Betancourt, lots of our favorite players, uh, those aren't really things that you do all the time in your playing. If you are an alternate picker, and I'm not talking economy picking right now, I'm talking about just alternate picking, down, up, repeat. If you're an alternate picking player that plays downwards pick slanting style, all of your string changes are going to take place after upstrokes. That uh, shreddy example I played earlier, all of those string changes happened after upstrokes, and there's a little bit of strategery involved in that, and all centers around the use of even-numbered phrases. Check this out. If you play any even number of notes on a string, like let's say six, it'll start off on a downstroke, and it'll end on an upstroke, because, well, even numbers here, even numbers here, that's just how it's going to work. One, two, three, four, five, six, and it on an upstroke. One, two, three, four, five, six, and it on an up. And so on. Any even numbered phrase will do this for you. Four notes. All of those ended with me doing an upstroke before I moved to the next string which is the real advantage of the downwards pick slanting style. Whenever you play with this picking style, and I've talked about this many times on my channel, as has Troy Grady in his amazing Cracking the Code series, which has kind of become like my micro-religion of picking. Um, but whenever you play with this picking style, our downstrokes go into the strings, our upstrokes come out of the strings. Do you see this? My pick isn't necessarily going down up like this. It's going down up like this right here. I recently did a video with my buddy Robert Baker over on his channel. We filmed it at Sweetwater Gear Fest a month or so ago. Be sure to check that out. We talk about some of his picking things and the whole downward pick slanting business. So be sure to check that out. A lot of people have said it's a really great video that helped them get into playing with this style. So be sure to scope that out. But again, whenever we do these changes, the upstroke is getting what I think of as air time. It's outside of the strings which makes it really easy to bounce to any string in either direction, whether it be going from a high string to a low string, or a low string to a higher string, or even string skipping, whatever. Because my upstrokes are always popping out like this, it's what makes it easy to change strings, as long as I phrase my stuff around those even numbers. So this exercise that we're playing is nothing but even numbers. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two. So whenever you practice this with that really strong downward pick slanting kind of attitude and outlook, it's going to be perfect to help you develop that natural inclination towards playing even numbered notes per string. This is something I started doing very consciously years ago, and lo and behold, the whole downward pick slanting thing just really clicked for me then. I see some people getting the idea that downward pick slanting is only for a certain direction whether that be ascending or descending. It doesn't matter. You can go up with it, you can go down with it. As long as you're changing strings after upstrokes, it's gonna be playing to your advantage. Again, watch my picking hand really closely here as I play ascending through the exercise. You'll notice that every time I'm changing strings, that upstroke is out here, out in the air. And then descending, 
same deal. It's always easier to do as long as I'm changing strings after those ups. And again, learning how to phrase in even numbers is going to help you do that, which is where this exercise comes in. Let's talk a couple more technique tips about getting this downward pick slanting thing down with this exercise. I want you guys to try this stuff. You might have noticed a second ago I was really exaggerating those motions. I mean, obviously when I'm playing fast, you know, my picking doesn't exactly look that big and exaggerated. But when you're learning these techniques, I encourage you to exaggerate. When you exaggerate the technique and make it bigger than it needs to be, it really kind of shows you all the benefits of why you're doing it that way, right? If you try to make this little teeny tiny motions right away, like this, like how my hand looks when I'm picking fast, you're gonna kind of miss out on the advantages here. Cause check this out. Like let's say I'm doing the descending version of the exercise, right? That first string change, like that right there, going from the high E string to crashing down on the B string, right? If I'm making a little teeny tiny pick motion like this, where like after that last upstroke, I'm still kind of in between the strings, you're kind of missing the whole point of what makes this advantageous. Cause then your hand's got to move above the B string to continue the set, right? I want you to make this picking motion so big that every time you do an upstroke, it's getting airtime above the next string that you're playing. Like right now, after that first upstroke, my pick is well above the B string. It's kind of in between the G and B string, catching air over both of those strings. See that? Always catching airtime out of the strings and above the next string. That way I can just crash down when it's time to go to that string. Have you ever noticed when Zach Wilde is playing and he's doing those like barbarian meat hammer alternate picked minor pentatonic licks like this? From this angle, you'll notice his picking hand is going crazy. Like the, the pick strokes are gigantic. It's not at all like what you see when you watch Al Di Miola play and it's this ultra economy of motion thing. When Zach is doing those licks, especially his upstrokes are gigantic. It looks kind of like this. You'll notice sometimes with those upstrokes, I'm getting like in line with the low E string, right? But why doesn't it sound like this? <laughs> A lovely sound, right? It's because if you looked at it from this angle, you'd notice that those upstrokes aren't just going up, they're going up and out, like away from the strings. Zach can be as huge with those upstrokes as he wants to because he's never in danger of snagging these strings because his upstroke goes like this. It's got this like diagonal trajectory. That upstroke could go out forever and it's at no risk of hitting any of the strings that are above it, you know, string wise. So whenever you're practicing this technique, think about the Zach thing. Think about how safe his picking is because he flings it out so high, right? Make it look like this. Again, that is not small picking whatsoever, right? But it's a great way to learn how to trust this technique and understand that no matter how far you whip that upstroke out, as long as you're keeping a good straight kind of diagonal in out path on the strings, there's no chance of you hitting the wrong string off your upstrokes. Now when it comes to your downstrokes, here's the other thing I want you to try doing. And again, it's all a matter of exaggerating first, refining second. Always remember to practice this way. With my downstrokes, like whenever I play in the low E string, you'll notice that my downstroke here is colliding with the A string to stop it. Right there, if I'm on the A string, I'm using the D string as kind of my safety net, my landing trampoline to stop my pick stroke.
because of the angle that I'm going into the strings at, there's no chance of me, you know, sounding out notes I don't want to because the pick is going in like this. It's not going to sound the next string. It's just going to thunk against it like this. That's the idea that you're looking for right here. Diagonal in, diagonal out. Again, lose the idea of up and down. Think in and out with your picking. Keep in a straight line as much as you can like this. Eventually refining it to be steeper and smaller and then you're going to be picking like a real Francis Bubble Trousers. One more thing that I'll add about this too before I send you guys along your way. If you take this exercise and reverse all the picking, so it starts off on an upstroke instead, you're going to notice that all the string changes happen after downstrokes. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. This is what I would think of as the upwards pick slanting Punisher exercise. You'll notice that my picking now is not doing this, it's doing this, it's carving in the other direction. Strong visual here is think about the way that a violinist bows across their strings and how that changes depending on what string they're on. Think about it like carving that way. So if you practice the same exercise but starting on an upstroke instead, <laughs> You'll have everything you need to master both of the most dominant picking styles that there are in shred guitar playing, crush your enemies, and hear the lamentations of the women. And so can you. So there you go guys, the Downwards Pick Slanting Punisher, your new best friend. I recommend practicing that, flipping the picking around so you do the Upwards Pick Slanting Punisher, as well as practicing the OG Regular Ass Punisher. Those things will turn you into a picking machine, no doubt. So make those part of your daily warm-up routine. These are good, like, pre-show workouts for me, too. So I'm running these all the time. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to get even more out of this video, be sure to grab those tabs, practice tracks, and guitar profiles off of my Patreon page. Patreon.com slash Ben Eller Guitars. You're also going to get access to a ton of bonus videos, a community of awesome and handsome people just like yourself and so much more. So don't delay, sign up today. And also be sure to give me a follow on the Instagram at Ben Eller Guitars for more guitar stuff, puppy pictures, cocktails, and food posts. I like things that are nice. All right, guys, it's time for me to get away from this camera and let my pick hand punishment begin. I recommend you guys do the same. Let's click it. More picking.